Are you really going to eat that? Podcast episode 117. So, uh, Jason, welcome to the podcast. It's fabulous to have you here today. Oh, thank you so much. It's great to be here. I'm really excited. We've already had a bit of a chat before we started talking, so I know we're going to have a great chat. But can you introduce yourself? Um, just give our listeners a quick background on who you are and what you're doing at the moment. Sure. Um, so my name is Jason Frischman, and I am a psychologist, and I live in uh, Vermont in the United States. And my family and I live in a very rural area of Vermont, but we work in Burlington, which is the largest city in the in the state, which is a very small city still. Mm -hmm. um, as a psychologist, I focus on families, men and boys, working with, with, with mostly male populations and doing men's work. And my training is primarily in something called adventure therapy and narrative therapy. So I'm an adventure storyteller that I help men to heal and, and, and grow, basically. So recently, in the last couple of years, I've moved to also doing a lot of online coaching for fathers, where I really support fathers to be more connected and more directed at home. I love that. And that kind of sings to my soul. It totally does. And I love the adventure therapy. That, that That's great. So where we, where do I go from here? I think I'm going to firstly start, if it's okay with you, is talk to you a little bit about your history. So we get, I'm sure we're going to talk about kind of your food history, but um, tell me a little bit about your health history, because I know that was kind of one of the things that kind of connected us was, you know, I asked for people who've got a bit of a health story and you were like, oh, love food. And so can you just tell the listeners a bit, a, a bit about your personal health journey, where you are right now and how you've got here, really? Absolutely. Um, it, it, it's been amazing, actually. So mm -hmm. right. I, I would start even before my health journey is I've always been a passionate cook and I really truly believe that nobody f should feel wanting depend no matter what their uh, dietary restrictions health restrictions um, no matter what they have we should always be able to nourish and satisfy our families our friends our guests whomever and right at the beginning of the pandemic I went to a naturopath because I was having some symptoms, some skin issues, basically. Okay. And we live out in the country. And the the doctor, after asking a bunch of questions, said, you know, I, I think you have Lyme disease. Oh, and wow. I think okay. you probably have a number of other tick-borne diseases as well. Let's do some testing. Mm -hmm. Well, the testing went, came back, and I had five different tick-borne illnesses. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. There were two different varieties of Lyme. <laughs> um, I didn't even know you some... could get different varieties of Lyme, I have to be honest. And I, I'm a naturopathic nutritionist, so I didn't even know that. Yes, and oh. I didn't know it at the time either. <laughs> and so he said to me, well, we're going to start as a result of these tick-borne illnesses. I also think you have something called CIFO, yep. which is small intestinal small intestinal fungal overgrowth overgrowth not bad so SIBO, SIBO probably most of the listeners will be, be familiar with but not CIFO so yeah so that's a big 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 thing yes Which, and okay. so I went for overnight from being able to eat anything yeah. and I eat very healthfully we cook from scratch on almost everything and we have you know we we, we, we live around farms and all of that I went from being able to eat everything to being restricted overnight to no dairy, mm -hmm. no refined grains whatsoever, no gluten, no fermented foods. So yeah. I'm actually a, an expert and an educator in fermented and traditional oh, preservation really? methods. So oh, wow. in my fridge at all times, I have probably six to 10 jars of different fermented foods oh. that I make for my family. Um, you know, no miso, no, you know, uh, no alcohol, no peanut butter, no mushrooms. And then one of the tick-borne illnesses I got was um, alpha-gal, which is, um, it's also in, in the States, it's called the, the Lone Star, or a Lone Star Tick gives it. Okay. It basically makes you allergic to meat. Oh my goodness me, okay. Right, and I don't eat a lot of meat anyway, but we have some good farms and I yeah. occasionally we would have it. And in the beginning of this whole process, I would eat some local pork and spend the next 12 hours with the feeling of a knife in my gut, sick and shaking. And so now it's been two years later and um, I will say 
that, you know, having these illnesses has actually been one of the best things that's ever happened to me. I got to explore all new types of free from cooking. I got to, I, like, I refuse to feel deprived. Right. Right. So I've perfected grain free tortillas that I make three times a week for myself. Right. And, um, you know, I've my friends will all joke. They're like, yeah, we don't feel bad for you. Look what you're having. Today. Like, <laughs> That's fantastic. Um, and so, yeah, I've been able to develop all of these new recipes and these new practices that I feel don't actually take much longer in the kitchen. And so, you know, for example, last night our family had pasta and I made three different dishes because my kids can eat something, my wife has to eat something and I have to eat something. <laughs> but with certain tricks and, 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 and ways of being, I could use one thing for another, I could put them all together and it was joyful. Yes. You know, it was absolutely like the music was going and I, you know, and, and it became a meaningful value laden experience rather than a drudgery you like you said you, you work with men to help them reconnect with the family is food a key part of that is kind of getting in the kitchen and getting back and create it doesn't have to be like you said, it doesn't have to be creating great meals but actually just being in that environment I I find be I'm not a chef I'm just a cook just a humble cook but for me I find we always call the kitchen the heart of the home don't we and I think that analogy is true it's where it's where stuff happens the best parties are always in the kitchen aren't they you know it's where stuff happens so is that part of the process is kind of encouraging them back into the kitchen yes and no um mm-hmm. It's a part of who I am. So it always works its way into the metaphors I use. It always works into the stories I share to teach things. The program that I do with men is very uh, individualized. Like it's a group program and yet the men can really choose their own adventure and, and choose their own path. So they don't always choose, let's say cooking as the action they will take to connect. Yep. And yet many of them often do just because, again, I, it is so heavy in the in the, the air when I speak. Um, I use it as a metaphor for so many things. Um, and it is such a rich, deep experience because, you know, if we think about eating together, it's not just eating together. It's prepare. It's getting the, obtaining the food, getting the food, you know, how do we get rid of the food and clean up for the food? So the entire environment that is involved with eating, there are so many family choices and values and and stories that can be expressed and how we do that intentionally becomes incredibly powerful. So, you know, some guys don't do that. They decide to work on, you know, uh, morning routines or bedtime routines or, you know, any number of their own growth needs. And yet the other pieces down the line, you know, my, my, the business, is called nourished connections yeah and so down the line there will be certainly some cooking courses and some metaphorical cooking courses and the idea of like how this can help in other ways currently the the initial program uh which is called journeyman foundations that's about learning the foundation and learning the the language and the skill set and then we'll move into other things so um but i have taught a lot of cooking and food preparation classes. And I find that men are often lit up in a way that I I love to watch. (laughs) It's amazing, isn't it? I think as, you know, as a nutritionist, food doesn't have to come into my arena. I can, you know, obviously food does, that's, that's, but you know, I mean, cooking doesn't have to, but I think when you have a passion for food you can't help it can you because you just you just want to share it so for me I I do lots of in my I've got a a membership and I do lots of cooking demos in there because I just want to kind of share share the joy you have been an amazing guest I really appreciate your time Uh, I'm aware that we've been on for a while so I'm just gonna hit you with my quick fire round if that's all right Jason so what food reminds you of childhood oh goodness shepherd's pie Oh, I love shepherd's pie. Oh, My mom makes the one. best shepherd's pie. And so anytime I came home from anywhere, that was there. That was always your, oh, yeah, what a nice dish. Lovely. Um, and your most memorable meal? Oh, goodness. Whew. Yeah, um, it. I'd have to say Passover Seder's. Oh, okay. Tell me what yeah. that is. So Passover Seder is, so Passover is a Jewish holiday where um, it's got in many ways, 
this one holiday encapsulate, and I'm not particularly religious or observant at all, but this one holiday encapsulates almost everything that I believe in and value. So it is the holiday where Jewish people traditionally were able to escape from slavery in Egypt and, you know, we tell the story. And so the holiday is celebrated by sharing the story, which I love that. Lovely, yeah. The story has themes of liberation from oppression. It has themes of social activism, which are also big pieces of what I do. And it's all done around an ordered and ritualized meal. Oh, And so it is something that it's been incredibly memorable. You know, I've had a Passover Seder in Israel with my family. We've had, I remember them as a child. I remember them, you know, having them with my family here in Vermont. And also when we travel back to New York and, and, and share it with my family from uh, my birth family and, you know, my, my blood family. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, uh, that is in many ways, my absolute favorite. And there's many, many good memories from that. Wow. Um, Thank you for sharing. And my final question for you today is what have you got for tea so I know you've listened to a couple of podcast episodes this is a very British thing so my husband is northern um northern English and 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 in northern England they say tea instead of dinner so tea is the the meal that they have at like 6 p.m 7 p.m their evening meal um so I call it tea in homage to him at my family we call it dinner so what have you got for your evening meal today what have you got for tea oh for tonight yeah ah so today's Thursday and we have some regular ones um, actually, funnily enough, Thursday is not as one of our least routine nights because <laughs> I have some meetings late night. My wife has some meetings late night. So it's often a, a, a quick throw together meal. So for tonight will likely be what my kids call stew night. Okay. Because I will probably in between meetings all day today, go and spend 10 minutes cutting something up and throwing it in a pot and then cutting up the next hour and throwing it in a pot. And there will be something that simmers all day. And by the end of the night, we'll have, you know, maybe um, a tomato based vegetable stew with beans and then i'll throw on some rice and that will be sort of the 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 thing they throw they like to have cheesy bread on the side and it'll be a big nourishing warm meal we do that probably once a week and um what's really nice right now is we have finished our garden season so i have a number of canned uh preserved food so i have uh, a bunch of stocks a bunch of tomatoes sauce that i've canned and i just did a whole batch of smoked green tomatoes that so tonight mm-hmm. will probably be a smoky kind of tangy chili stew I love that and the thing i love about <laughs> meals like that is they're never the same twice are they because it literally yeah. is just what you grab your hands on you know sometimes it's cooking for two hours sometimes it's cooking for three and they are the best meals, but you can't ever recreate them, can you? Because it's just like, what, what what have I got? Throw it in. So brilliant. Love that. People always ask for the recipe. I said, I can tell you the process, but not the recipe. That's it. That's most of my recipes, to be honest. That's brilliant. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jason. It's been an absolute delight to talk to you this week. Huh? I really appreciate your time. Thank you. And, and dinner sounds great. Can I come around for tea? <laughs> Anytime. You know what? Come, next time you come to the States, we'll have Seder. Uh, but, oh, yeah. That would be amazing. I'm, I am need to find, yeah, brilliant. Thank you so much. I awesome. really appreciate it. Thank you I, as well.